Hi, it's Cayman Reynolds, and in this video, we're going to catch a bunch of newly mated queens. We're going to replace them with a couple virgins that um, got a, away from me. I prefer to drop cells, but um, virgins will work fine in certain conditions. And then we're going to cut the video, show you the sp how to make some splits for your queens, and then we're going to place the queens in those splits and just talk about why we're doing things and how this is working. I mean, this is sustainability at its finest. I've purchased hundreds and hundreds of queens over the year, and some of it's because back when I was driving a truck, I really had to because I didn't have the time. Some of it was before I had the skill to raise my own queens, and I still purchase queens from time to time because I like to try new genetics out, and oftentimes I scratch my head wondering why I did it because so far nothing has really compared to being able to raise my own, definitely price-wise for sure. So let's uh, get going. I'm going to stick these virgins in these cages over here, and get this veil on and you know we built this box ourselves as well so the whole setup is you know pretty much homemade and that's that's the way to really have fun now some of these bees are loving me being in front of this this uh, interest in entrance over here <laughs> can't say anything I'm going to stick these virgin virgins off to the side over here the last thing we want to do is step on one so there's three compartments in here of three frames and this lid applies pressure down to keep them separate. Now I am going to start over here on my side. We've got pollen patties in here too, kind of gluing it down a little bit more. Make sure the queen's not underneath there. This is a reflectix material you can get from Lowe's. So we're going to take this, kind of match it up over here with this division and just, uh, you know, make sure that the queen primarily is not able to go from one side to the other. So that should work. This is the smaller of the three sides right here. And you know, sometimes you don't get three to come back. Um, I was really glad that uh, we got 100%. Um, oftentimes you don't get that. It doesn't break my heart at all. All right, so let's see if we can find the queen here. Laurel, you can point her out to me if you see her. get to this middle frame and there's the cup right there that uh, we introduced um, I don't you know I don't remember the date on this one I didn't write it on the lid I just dropped them down up oh, there she is right up there and this is a little early compared to what we usually do when we pull queens I'm usually I like to see some capped brood but since this, these are for my own personal use I'm going to go ahead and pull them, plus I have several queens that need to go into some mating nukes, so it'll be alright. She'll be back into a hive in a very short order, and you'll see what we're going to do. So that's a, a, one of our carny queens, uh, you know, they're, they're still pretty light. Some of ours end up being really dark, but I'm sure it's because of the, uh, the Italians and other bees that we have around here. So you can see down there, probably see some of that brood and, and whatnot. Looks really nice, so if she hasn't been laying terribly long but to me that pattern down there looks pretty good and we're gonna go ahead and pull her so we can drop some of these versions in there so what did I do with those cages here they are so these are Jay-Z BZ cages I like them because they fit in between and they ship really well and there's several ty cage types out there so you got your candy up here it's the queen candy all right, there she is. Oh yeah, we're gonna mark her too. This is a prime time to mark her. Now, I'm not gonna put attendance in there since she's going into a hive pretty much immediately. Well, there she goes. And that's young queens like this are really bad about running around like that. All right, so we got her by the thorax. Got our marker. Got ourselves a little dot there. Got to be very careful because you don't want to get her eyes, you don't want to get her antennae, you don't want to do any of that kind of stuff. But young queens like this are very runny. 
you definitely want to make sure that you don't pinch their legs all right so that's one right there I'll stick her in here and off in the shade so now we are going to place that back in there go ahead and take this jzbz cup off put that right down in there tell you what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to grab one of these uh, virgins over here came from the same mother those frogs are really going at it today they like all this rain that we just got all right so I should have waited a second to put that in here and this was actually the middle frame in the little colonies like this it's better to keep the brood where you pulled it from because this this colony probably has one and a half frames of brood. so what I want to see now as we're introducing this virgin all right so I got her and this is the frame that has the larvae and the eggs and stuff so let her run herself down and just see how she reacts and the bees react to her We just don't want to see a bunch of bees coming after her and stinging her, you know, trying to, to kill her. Alright. You know, and this colony is not very strong, so I'm not too worried about it. I'm just going to go ahead and drop her down. Now, we definitely don't want to disturb this colony until she's come back. So I, I checked back in about 14 days on this side. And so if you want to put pollen patties in there, you need to do that now. All right, so now I'm going to do this side and just get a this little brick here. You know, there's better ways to do it than this. I've I've cut these things in strips so you can have them in individual strips and that seems to work a little bit better. There's nothing fancy about this system at all but it does work. You can see how they're eating that pollen sub right there. Now there is pollen coming in but there's just not a lot of it and it's not very diverse and I know that our season's starting to wind up really, really getting close to being at the end of it. You can see that, that pollen right there. And it's all pretty similar in color. And I don't know exactly what it's coming from, but I do know at this point. Oh, there's a the queen right there. Right, so we're going to snatch her up. Well, I guess I can leave that there. Oh, there she's going on the other side. Queens really like to get away from that sunlight and dive to the next frame. Well, mister, I tell you, my fingers are so gummed up from propolis from all the other bee work today. You know, if you miss her, just try again. Got to keep her from going into that other side. There we go. All right. Get her flipped around here. All right. So we've got her again by the thorax, which is a very strong part of the body. Some people do it by the wings. I, this is the way I always have done it. I probably should do it by the wings, but... All right, there you have it. We have a dot. I should have already had the queen cage ready. I'm just going to pop that right there. There's another queen right there. Okay. So let's go ahead and pull the next frame out and see what kind of brood we're looking at. Because that one was foundation on one side. And this is one of the questions people were asking me is how do you feed these? Well, I always have frames of sugar syrup or something like that. So I drop a frame of sugar syrup into each one of these when I made them up. 
You can always add another one later if you would like to. You can also use fondant or even queen candy. As long as the bees are able to get out and take cleansing flights, they can deal with the cornstarch that's in the queen candy. It's not ideal, um, but they can deal with it. And you can also cut holes into these and then have another box on top and then have a quart jar inverted over that. Mm -hmm. And that, that'll, that'll work just fine. All right, so we have the queen, lots of nice looking larvae down in there. The thing with these mating nukes is you don't want to let them get too strong. You can always pull bees out of them. But this, this one looks good. There's plenty of brood down in there. So once that brood turns around, they have pollen coming in. We're giving them pollen sub. And that's going to help that brood be healthy. And when all these old bees that we're seeing are gone, all these young larvae down there are going to be in here to take their place. And this is just another awesome frame. So we're going to take the other virgin. I don't know why I stuck it so far. I need to kind of get out of the way for a second. Let all these bees come back to their home real quick. Alright. Now check out this version right here. She looks pretty good. And she's a runner too. Goodness. That's the way most of them are. That other one was reluctant to come out. So we're just going to... And we're going to see how she does. Boy, she's scooting around. She settled down a little bit. And we're going to try to trim several things in this video to, to try to make it as concise as possible. And it's going to be a little bit longer just due to the nature of all that we're explaining and showing. All right, so we have really nice looking brood here. They're even starting to cap it. This is definitely the stronger of the three. And lots of bee bread above, and that's, that's really good. Okay, let's see if the queen's on this side. And it's, I'm seeing no brood on this side. But yeah, there's, there's several different ways. I mean, you don't have to have it with this setup. It's just super easy when you're running a lot of deeps to be able to just make all of your mating nukes with deeps, make your splits with deeps. I mean, it's just everything is interchangeable. Lots of really good looking brood down in there. Just uh, check that out right in there. That's exactly what we want. And I'm telling you, now see, if you were, say, you know, you're not planning on making more queens with this and you just wanted to get some queens mated and now you're wanting these things to grow into large colonies, you could, you know, break this thing apart and, you know, put them in different boxes, but none of this brood is hardly capped at all. And once the queen starts laying good oxalic acid vapor, you can get a very high level of kill because all the mites are exposed. And even though these are small colonies, they'll still have mites in there and it's good to hammer them while uh, they're all exposed like that. All right, so and you can see there's not a ton of bee coverage on any of these things. Now it is a warmer time of the season, but also you get some added benefit of the other colonies next door to be able to help insulate the other colonies in the same box. And, you know, also I can turn this into a, a split right down the middle as well. It's got another groove cut into it. All right, so where is that queen, Laurel? Looking for a spot to lay. They're, they're starting to draw that out. There she is right there. So there she is, over up against the wall, so that's really good. You know, these queens aren't swollen to full size. They, they can't because there's just not enough area to lay. There's not enough bees to maintain it. But I promise you, once you stick them in a colony that has a lot more nurse bees and potential, they will start laying and start swelling quite a bit more than that. So let's get her... Stick her right there. Alrighty. Got her with a thorax. All 
my paint's dried up a little bit. Now you have to be careful. If you push these pins all the way down, it will flood out. And if you do that on your queen, I mean, it'll drown her. So you just kind of want her to, to get it going again by gently tapping it. And there you have it. And this lets us know when we see her later, you know, how old she is and, and that kind of stuff. Come on, get down in there. Yeah, again, you just have to be very careful to make sure that you don't accidentally get one of her legs or an antenna or something in these cages as you're closing them up. So now we have three wonderfully fresh mated queens who haven't even seen their full potential yet. I'm going to close this up and we'll be dealing with this shortly because you definitely won't want to leave them like that for very long. Now, I am going to put a set, queen cell in this one later. I don't have one ready to drop in. And let's go ahead and get that out of there too. If I can get it with my fat thumbs. Okay, yeah. And here we go. So, you know, that's not a whole lot of resources right there, really. I mean, if you only have one or two hives, it is. But if you catch some swarms or you get some extra bees, this is the kind of thing that you can do with them to help keep yourself sustainable. Keep in mind that we have colonies that go queenless from time to time as well. I mean, it happens all the time throughout spring. The difference is, is we have ways of dealing with that. And it's sometimes... Um, we end up combining and then just splitting again later, but having queens like this is so valuable. Let's get that other virgin that we've left out and see how the bees are dealing with her really quick. All right, so here she is right now. You know, and they're not killing her or stinging her or anything, but they are seriously checking her out. And when this next round of three comes back, we'll see how well they do. Again, I prefer queen cells a lot more. I prefer sticking the queen cell just right up here above some brood. It'll emerge from the cell about a day, day and a half after I, I put it in there. I try to always give it about a day, day and a half. And, and in that way, as she comes out, it's dark, it's quiet. We're not coming in for a couple weeks. The bees have felt their queenlessness for a, a long period of time, and I just feel like when she's coming out of the cell, they're like, all right, we've, we've made ourselves a queen because we really needed one. Instead of this, where it's like, whoa, where did you come from? Now, there are beekeepers that use virgins all the time. All right, there she goes. We'll see how that works out. I'm not used to using virgins for colonies this large, so if Richard Noel or someone like that watches this and thinking, well, that poor queen's gone, um, I guess this will be a learning experience for everybody. All right, now I'm trying to get her to move. Not, I really don't want to mess with her, but I also don't want to crush her dropping her down into this center spot. All right, so there she is. Let's be very careful. Yeah, that's just a really tedious spot. Come on, girl. Help me out here a little bit. There you go. Move around, move around. She's still on that bar right there, right where I can crush her. There we go. All right, well, we'll come back later and see how good our next round is. Definitely don't want to smoke it at this point with those virgins in there. And we're gonna put this lid back on. And throw that brick. All right, so let's go make some splits. Let's split this high, we're gonna get in there. Smoke these bees down. Now, there's a lot of bees up top. Everyone's having a weekend, but us beekeepers. All right, and we've got our excluder, which is really handy because we know that our queen's down there. We don't have to worry about looking into this second box right here. And I'm gonna 
put a little bit of smoke down in there. Oops, well, that was not supposed to happen. But it did. Now, one thing I almost forgot to mention is on little colonies and splits like this, you have this little reducer up here. We're re reducing it down to just a couple of inches. Now, once the colonies get to be a packed single or a strong single, you know, we're, we're talking around nine frames, eight frames or bigger, you know, filling that up. I'm going to reduce that entrance. Um, actually, I'm going to reduce the reducer. I'm going to have about six, five inch opening. They need to have plenty of ventilation or it's, they're going to overheat in there on those really hot, sunny days. Now, if it's like a strong colony like this one, I don't even bother reducing it. I mean, you can, but I just, I just don't fool with it. I just try not to get robbing started. So the queen's down in here somewhere. That's our first order of business. It's finding her, and then we can start picking what we need. All right. So we'll start with this acorn plastic frame here. I don't have many of them, but I mean, bees do pretty well with them. All right, this looks like a good frame to choose from. All right. Well, maybe not as much as I thought. So we have capped brood, we have some middle-aged larvae down in here, and we have bee bread. And more middle-aged larvae. So she's probably not on this frame. Not a whole lot of room for her to lay. So let's move on to the next one. Now I'm going to go ahead and just stick these frames over in here. That way if I do miss the queen, I'll just have her in that other box. We really need to find her though. Now what you could do, by the way, if you're not good at finding the queen, this is something that you can easily do, is let's say you want to take three frames of brood from this colony. You can take those three frames that you want to give this colony, shake all the bees off, put, put some uh, combs or foundations in its place, put your queen excluder on top, and then put them up here. So I guess you could take three of these, rotate them down, Make sure the ones you pull out of here, you shook all the bees off, stick them up here, and then come back the next day, and then you'll know that all the bees that are on those combs are not going to have the queen because she'll be locked down by that excluder. And uh, that's just an easy way to do it. You can also get a high number of nurse bees that way. If you're bringing up frames of young larvae that are not capped, you can stick them up here above the excluder come back the next day or even later that day and those nurse bees are going to go up there and start taking care of that larvae and so now you know what to shake from or how to make splits from so excluders are a fantastic tool improperly used they can be a, a problem properly used they can be a great asset to the experienced beekeeper all right look at that nice diversity of bee bread I'm so happy to see that that is going to help our bees go through the summer. Really happy to see that. All right, we have a pretty good looking you know, pattern considering what's going on with the bee bread all over the place. Wow. That's why we raise our own. All right, I'm not seeing her on this one. That would be a great frame to give to our split. One, because it has the bee bread. It also has capped brood. You really want to give, I feel like, your splits the capped brood. That way, it's, it's easier to maintain the capped brood. They're not have to, having to actively produce all that jelly and feed them so much. It takes so much effort to do that. And so the, our new split, we want to make it as easy as possible for them. All right, now a couple of these bees are getting testy with my hive tool here. Give them a little bit of smoke. And let's see if we can find that queen. I, I really need to start worrying about that. I don't know if you all can hear the frogs, but they are really going to town, singing their song. More bee bread, brood. Not seeing the queen. Nice. And you know, if we had had a, a great honey flow over here this year, we would have just had so much honey. 
it would have been insane. Um, it's just, it's just it's still mind blowing that the colonies are, um, you know, they were as big as they were. You know, I already took a split off of this one, a good one, and uh, you know, still it just didn't make any honey at all, none. I had to feed them just to keep them like this. Not all the bee yards were like that, but it, none of them were great. All right, this, I'm seeing eggs up here. Just look at that pattern right there. This is what happens when you have low mite loads. A good queen, and the best queens come from yourself. And you have good nutrition. Right now there's a lot of bee bread in there. We've been feeding pollen patties as well. This one's already consumed all theirs from the last visit. And, uh, wow, just... Just larvae everywhere over here. This would be a fantastic frame to shake because there's just, you can see all that larvae down in there. Um, let me blow some of that out of the way. Look at all that. That takes a lot of nurse bee time and energy to maintain that brood, keep them the right temperature, feed them, just keep them clean, get ready to start sealing them and capping the cells lots of work and energy so we're going to have a high volume of nurse bees here why we want nurse bees is one because they're young so they have most of their life ahead of them two they're going to feed the larvae for the new queen that we're introducing and also they're not going to fly back to this colony any of the bees that we put into this split over here that are flying age are going to just right on back on over so that's one thing you have to consider, and I think probably one of the biggest mistakes new beekeepers make when making their splits is just not giving them enough bee coverage. And it might be enough bee coverage initially, but if you end up with two frames of bees flying back, then all of a sudden it's not any longer. And now you have an issue. And so this colony has been in a single brood situation since early April. And it's just doing absolutely wonderful with it. We're seeing more good brood over here. Again, it's nice that it's all in one box. Oh my. Yeah. This colony was ready to be split again. And again, we don't have any honey flow coming up or anything like that. So now's the time to do it. All we needed was a good queen. Let's see if she's over in this, this direction. With of course, when I'm doing a video, it's like earlier today, I was with working through some with Laurel, and it's like the first frame I pull. Oh, there's the queen. This video will be like the last one. It's just the way that it works. Well, we finally found her. I overlooked her on a frame. There's quite a few bees in here, and, and she's not marked. She might have been at one point, but she's not now. And that's one thing I'm going to be testing out is some of Tester's model car paint and seeing if that works any better. The nice thing is, if it doesn't work and the bees uh, kill the queens because of it, I'll let you know and then you don't have to worry about it, but it, I'm pretty sure it'll work just fine. And we're, we're gonna be trying out those. Uh, Posca pens, they work pretty well, but sometimes they chew them off and I'm looking for something that's a little bit more reliable. And uh, we'll just see how that goes. But there she is right there, so now we know what we can and cannot pull. So all of this over here is good. Now, preferably, I want capped brood. I don't want anything that's gonna be a lot of work for them to maintain. So this is not capped. We're gonna just start sticking all this back. There was 10 frames in this one. All right, so the queen was right here. So we need to quickly decide what we want over here, what we don't want. And remember, we've got this box over here, but it, all it is, is foodstuffs. There's a little bit of foundation up there as well that's partially drawn. We'll probably be taking some of it. So let's decide what we want to make this split. We can make this a pretty large split. I don't plan on doing that. I mean, it's going to be a good split, but it's not going to be like a halfway down the middle, probably. All right, so this is capped brood pretty recently capped because they're still capping some of that right there this would be a, a decent frame to give um, that's really capped really well so there's not going to be a whole lot of work on this new hives part to do and we'll be giving both of these some pollen patties all right so right here 
We've got some bee bread. We got some capped brood. Um, you know, I'm just gonna shake the bees out on this one. All right, so there's a bunch of bees. We'll stick that one right over here. Excuse me. Come on, come on. And now we've got a whew, just a solid frame of bee bread over here. There's also a pretty good bit of nurse bees that get onto bee bread as they have to go over there and consume that to create the worker jelly and royal jelly. Oh, there's a bee being born right there. Fuzzy bee, happy birthday. All right, this is gonna rock your world, little bee. I apologize in advance. All right, well, I shook it out into that next one. It fell right on down there. There's several more coming on out. Honestly, this wouldn't be too bad of a frame to give, but I believe there's already a good frame of bee bread over there. And this big colony is going to need bee bread as well, and it's going to need some nurse bees. We don't want to take all their nurse bees. You don't want to create a huge imbalance. Um, imbalances are bad. They can cause super procedures and cause a lot of different problems. Now, I believe this is the one, yes, that had eggs. It had, yeah, tons of larvae over here. So we know the queen's not on here. Just look at all that wonderful white larvae. Anyways, we're going to shake this frame down in there. It's got a lot of nurse bees on it, I am sure. Keep in mind, all the forager bees are going to come back and help guard this. And, okay, that looks like that's it for all of that. Now let's see what we left our split. So we have, this is the bee bread frame I was talking about. Pretty good bit of bee bread. Capped brood. Yeah, a little bit of capped brood there. That's going to be some bee power. Now I'm going to stick this here because I'm going to stick a frame of uh, food over here. They're definitely going to need some food. We'll get that from the second deep. And then we have, huh, this one's larvae. Yeah, larvae on this side too. I guess this was a shakeable frame. No big deal. Shake those off. We'll give the larvae back to the big hive. Put that right down in here. Which probably means we need to grab another one of capped brood. We don't have to. This is plenty right here. All of these nurse bees down in here. Two good frames of capped brood. Let's check and see what this one was again. Woo, okay, capped brood mostly. And a decent bit of capped brood and bee bread. So, you know, there's a decent bit of bee power right there. A lot of bee power down into here. I have to start getting some smoke to keep them in a little bit. And just kind of like, woo, get down and down in there. All right, so now, I mean, if I wanted to, that's plenty enough. That's tons of bee coverage for just that right there. We could give them another frame of cap root. Honestly, I think we're going to call it quits. We'll see how good that does. I'm going to put the queen right in between those two. I'm going to give them some combs and foundations. And Oh, that's the other frame that we needed to give. I knew two seemed a little bit light. We need to come up in here and get some good frame of honey slash sugar syrup this year. Okay. This frame feels like it's got it. I haven't been into this box in a while. Yeah. Now we can stick these bees in here. Now keep in mind most of these bees right here are forager bees. Nurse bees really don't have a whole lot of business up here because it's just pretty much sugar syrup and honey. And, uh, you know, that's, that's it. So that one's pretty full. We'll stick this one over here. Some of our bees are heading out back to the original queen, I'm sure. Woo, that smells good. They're fanning their wings. It smells awesome. 
try to keep them separate here. It's better if you give them a little bit more space than right on a pallet. This will work just fine. All right. Now we are going to take this drawn comb of capped, well, it's not capped anything, actually. And we are going to just stick that back in there as replacement. Let's see, two, four, six, nine, okay. We're going to stick this one in as well because that queen needs room to lay. And once you uh, decide how many frames that you have, you need to make sure that you always push them back together because if you don't, they'll widen them out and then you won't be able to hardly get it back again. Whoops. Okay. I'm going to stick that excluder on here after we throw some pollen sub. Help keep that queen laying full throttle. Now, as far as the pollen sap goes, oh, here we go. Get the bees out of the way. Now, we're not going to want to stick that pollen sub on these frames over here. We want to stick it over some larvae. I know there's larvae on both of these frames right here, so at the perfect spot, stick some of this pollen sub. So we're just going to stick that right there. And instead of sticking it all in one big group, you can spread it out a little bit more, giving the bees more access to the same quantity. And that way, they'll consume it quicker and you won't have so much small hive beetle problems. All right, oh, just one more time, girls, one more time. And make sure with your excluders, the rib side always goes down. There's that. A little more smoke, a little more smoke. All right, we'll want to feed this colony some sugar syrup as well because we have, you know, stressed them out a little bit. Whenever you get into your colonies, it's a, it's a little stressful on the bees. But it also can be very helpful, too. I mean, it's not all stress. I mean, you can also, you know, if they're starving or something, you can save their lives. So, in this case, we're making splits. They didn't swarm this year because they just really didn't feel the need to. And so we're helping them reproduce successfully in a very controlled manner that is going to have a very high percentage of success. Now, let's get some more frames for this colony over here. We are going to add a couple frames of comb so when that queen starts laying, she will have plenty of space. And I think on the rest of it, I'm just going to do foundations. I'd like to get some more drawn comb if possible. We'll see if we can get some more this year. Okay. This will give them a little bit more foodstuffs. And we'll just go ahead and put these bees down in there. Most of them are going to fly back though. So you can see how these are partially drawn foundations. Just plop that down right in there. And I'm going to stick both foundation sides together. And I'm going to take this foundation right here that is partially drawn, stick that against this one that is mostly drawn, and then we're going to have this one over here that's, well, I just got stung. I pinched on, dog on it. It happens. And here I thought I was going to get through this without a sting. So we're going to take that finger and smoke it down good. B wasn't coming after me. I just, I grabbed it too quick and didn't look what I was doing. Get that stinger off. All right. So this one's good right here. Now, what about feeding sugar syrup? We're going to give this some pollen sub, but I don't want to give them sugar syrup right off the bat. I really feel like being dis, 
oriented like this, they just have more of a tendency to drown in frame feeders. Now, if you have a feeder where they can't fall into, that's just fine. An inverted jar, an inverted bucket. Go ahead and get that going. But also, I want this queen to come on out. I want her to start laying a good bit before I start hitting the feed really hard and heavy. So I'll probably put a little bit of feed in here in the next couple days. And then after I've seen her laying a good bit, then I'll actually feed really hard. So this isn't a big colony. They also have that frame of bee bread, a little bit of pollen coming in. So we're just going to give them a small bit of patty. Come on out of the way. All right. Scoot that on over. And then throw the lid on it after we put the queen in. Now, I'm not in any rush for this queen to come on out. We, I mean, we just pulled her out less than an hour ago. But I am going to put her in right now. I mean, I, I think it's best when they go in as quickly as possible. So I'm just going to stick her in like that. I'm also going to put a little bit of this sub in the way. Just a tiny bit. I think that'll just slow the introduction process. I Likely not needed. I'll come back in a week and see how she's laying. And maybe we'll show you guys. Probably will. Um, let's see here. We got the entrance reducer. Where did I, where did I go with the lid? I don't, did we ever get a lid? Ah. So here's our rim uh, on our lid. Give them plenty of head space so they can get access to that patty quickly. And there we have it. So we have a nice colony. Once all that brood emerges out, they're going to occupy so much more space. This colony still has a lot of brood, has a laying queen. We're in awesome shape right now. So I'm just going to throw a couple more things in here and be done. So there, there, we, there you have it. We've put a new queen into our mating nukes. We've pulled some of our own queens out. We've made a split. Now it's just a matter of making sure that we address the mite situation and help the bees out nutritionally through this period of summer dearth for us. Now some of you won't have it, but help them as best as we can. And whenever nature decides to be generous, we'll, our bees will be ready. Thanks for watching this video.